time for the top 10. Hey, good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also in tune addition to that as well. Today's top 10 video is gonna be a little bit shorter than normal. I know some of you are disappointed. Some of you are extremely happy though. You think they're too long. Normally I go into a lot of detail about why I rank teams where I do within the top 10. There's not a whole lot of point in doing that today for a couple of reasons. Number one, only two or three teams in my top 10 even played last week. Uh, so there's not going to be a lot of changes to the top 10 and nothing really new to say about the majority of the teams within my top 10. That's one of the reasons today's top 10 video is going to be a little bit shorter than normal. Second reason, I have a second video coming for you today. That's right, two videos today. As you might know, this is an exciting week for Uncle Lou. The SEC kicks off on Saturday and I've got a little something for you this afternoon. You don't want to miss it. But up first today, the top 10 video. Let's get right to it. All right, hit the thumbs up button right now if you're excited for SEC kicking off this week or if you're just enjoying the first two or three weeks of college football season so far. Hit the thumbs up. It's free. It doesn't take you any time. And subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year. And believe it or not, some of them are even watchable. That's right. Hit subscribe. You'll thank me later. All right, now at the end of the video, I will put up 11 through 25 for those of you that are curious, but I don't typically rank 11 through 25. I normally just do my top 10 because I spend so much time explaining my reasoning. The video would be two days long if I had to do that for a top 25, but I get a lot of questions all the time. Lou, who would you have 11th? Where would this team be ranked if you don't have them in the top 10? So I'll put up on the screen 11 through 25 at the end of this video to satisfy your curiosity. All right, now. We're gonna do it the same way we always do it. I'll start, start at number 10 and work my way down to number one. Here's last week's poll. For those of you that didn't catch it, this is where I had my top 10 situated last week. And as you can clearly see, the vast majority of those teams did not play. So there won't be a lot of changes. I have made a couple of changes though, and they're significant. Let's get started. We'll run through it. At number 10 this week, I did, I've done this a couple of times in the past. This is my poll, I can do whatever I want. I've got two teams at number 10, and they play this week, Army and Cincinnati. I had Army at number 10 last week, admittedly too high. I, I don't think Army is the 10th best team. I get that. But they had two impressive wins at the time, and no one else did. Uh, so I, I put them at 10. Let's, I mean, showing some respect for a service academy, there's a lot worse things I could be doing, right? So I had Army at 10. They play Cincinnati this week. I'm really high on Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati may be the best group of five team in America. If you look at my last week's 11 through 25, uh, where did I have Cincinnati? Uh, somewhere around 13 or 14, I think. I'm going to put them both at number 10 this week. The winner of this week's game between Army and Cincinnati will be number 10 in my poll next week, period. No questions asked. Army slash Cincinnati comes in this week at number 10. That takes us down to number nine. LSU, oh my God, you've got LSU at number nine. Yes, I've got LSU at number nine. Defending national champions, 15 and 0. One of the best teams in college football we've seen in a long, long time. Nowhere I rank LSU in my poll this year has anything to do with that or, or takes anything away from that. This isn't a poll of last year. It's a poll of this year. LSU lost an ungodly amount of talent. I have explained this a million times every time I've talked about LSU. Yes, I think LSU is a good team. Yes, I think they're one of the most talented teams. They also play in one of the toughest divisions. They also lost 15 or 16 of their starters. They've also had a couple of starters that did come back, decide to opt out. Most notably, their best player, Jamar Chase, wide receiver, the best uh, wide receiver in America, in my opinion. Last year's LSU offense was a result of Joe Brady and Joe Burrow. Brady was only there for one year as the passing coordinator. I don't know that that's enough to permanently instill that style of offense at LSU. It's not an Oklahoma situation where they've been running the same offense year after year after year after year, after year and it's just plug and play at the quarterback position. I don't know that to be the case at LSU. Joe Burrow, an all-time great year. I don't care how good of a year the LSU quarterback has this year, it's not going to match Joe Burrow. 
So I just don't see LSU repeating what they did last year. It doesn't mean I don't think LSU is a good team. They're a great team. And they'll get plenty of chances to prove me wrong. They play Alabama. They play Auburn. They play Texas A&M. They play Florida. I mean, they play a ton of really good teams. If they're as good as they were last year, they'll win those games. It's that simple. And they'll move up the pole. Don't worry about where I have them ranked right now. That's number 10 and number 9. Now, there is a change in my poll at 6, 7, and 8. All right? Only one of those teams played. It was Notre Dame. I had them uh, 10. I had them 8 last week. I've now moved them up to six. They destroyed South Florida. No, it's just South Florida. You know, Notre Dame ain't playing nobody. Yeah, nobody plays nobody. We know that. When you play a nobody, the best you can do is go out and dominate and humiliate them. And that's what Notre Dame did. They shut them out. They didn't give a single point. The offense scored at will against South and Florida. They moved up and down the field. They looked better week two. Notre Dame did. Then they did week one against Duke. So they're improving. They're heading in the right direction. I mean, these are things you want to see from your team, regardless of who you're playing, how good or bad they are. You want to see improvement. There was obvious improvement at Notre Dame from week one to week two. Now, it's not uh, it, it's not LSU and Auburn's fault that they didn't play. The SEC's made the schedule the way it is. Again, LSU, Auburn, all these teams, Texas, these teams that are up sort of maybe higher than where you think they should be, they're all going to get a chance to prove me wrong. I mean, the SEC starts playing this week. Texas uh, has a uh, Big 12 game, I believe, coming up this week. So you're going to get to see all these teams play. And if I've got Notre Dame ranked too high, they'll lose a game or two somewhere along the line and get bumped back down. But it was an impressive win. They beat Duke at home a couple of weeks ago, humiliate South Florida at home with a shutout this past week. Two good wins. I moved Notre Dame all the way up to number six. Yeah. And then I've got uh, Texas at seven and Auburn at Eight. Again, Auburn has yet to play. They'll get plenty of opportunities to move up or down this poll. It doesn't matter where I have them at now. They play this weekend. They host Kentucky. Uh, they're a significant favorite. Most people expect them to beat Kentucky. So no reason they won't at least stay where they are after this weekend's game and maybe even move up, depending on how they do against Kentucky and what happens with these teams ahead of them. It's nothing that Auburn did that made me move them down. It's nothing that Texas did that made me move them down. They didn't even play. It just has everything to do with what I saw from Notre Dame. That's it. Now, I haven't seen anything from Auburn, so I don't have anything to go on. So I think it's a pretty fair ranking for the barn. Texas destroyed UTEP or whatever it was they played a couple of weeks ago. Again, that's all you can do. You go out and play a terrible team, all you can do is destroy. Texas ain't played nobody. I know, nobody played nobody. But the point is, they did what they had to do. They destroyed them. Texas is a good team. They're top 10. Again, they'll play Oklahoma down the road. They'll play a TCU, a Kansas State. I, well, okay, those teams ain't no good. But anyway, you get the point. Uh, if Texas is, te oh, Texas is the same Texas. If Texas is the same Texas, they'll lose to five teams this year. You don't have to worry about it. But right now, this is what I have, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Takes into the top five, uh, five, four, and three. Did not change. Florida, Georgia, OU, none of them played this weekend. No reason to change it. Nothing happened to make me change my mind about those teams. If you want my thoughts on them, watch last week's top 10 video where I talk about why they're there. I flip-flopped one and two. Clemson went out and destroyed the Citadel. I, I know, I know, I know. Clemson ain't played nobody. Yeah, they ain't they played nobody Citadel and, and, and nobody Wake Forest and beat them both without a problem. What else do you want them to do? I moved Clemson up. It was a shutout. It's not easy to do. I don't care who you're playing. Same reason I moved Notre Dame up to shut the opponent out. It's not easy to do. Bama might be better than Clemson. I don't know. I think these are clearly one and two, Bama and Clemson. I've had, uh, I've had Bama at one for a couple of weeks. And every time I had Bama at one, I said, Put Clemson at one. I don't care. These are clearly the best two teams. It doesn't matter what order you have them in. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to say the same thing today to Bama fans. I'm not telling you you're not the best team. You just haven't played. It's not your fault. I've seen two weeks of Clemson. I know 100% without a doubt they're elite. There's no question about it. I'm 99% sure Alabama is elite, but I got to see them. So I'll see them this weekend. Alabama goes out and beats an SEC opponent on the road, Missouri, by 50 points. Maybe I'll put them back ahead of Clemson again. I don't know. But I've got Clemson one, Bama two, OU three, Georgia four, and Florida five. That's going to be it for this video. I know it's a lot shorter than I normally do to top tens, but again, none of these teams played. So no point in spending 45 minutes talking about Texas. I explained why I moved teams around the few teams that I did move around. Again, a lot of this stuff will start to sort itself out. The SEC starts playing this week. You got ACC versus ACC matchups this week. You got Big 12 versus Big 12 matchups this week. Some of these teams are going to start winning. Some of these teams are going to start losing. The top 10 will start making a lot more sense then. Uh, who are these teams playing this week? Clemson's on a bye week. Alabama's on the road at Missouri. They're a 27-point favorite yesterday. Now it's up to 28. 
I got to get 27. Uh, yeah, they're going to destroy Missouri. Oklahoma versus Kansas State. Oklahoma will win by 100. UGA at Arkansas. I expect no less than a 28-point win by UGA or I will be disappointed. I don't want to see a repeat of what I saw last year from Georgia. Last year, Georgia opened up the season week one on the road at Vandy, the worst team in the East. Arkansas is the worst team in the West. We went out last year to Vanderbilt, dominated the first half, well, got up to a 24-0 to lead against Vandy in the first half. Entire rest of the game, second half included, we only scored three points, and the starters were in for the entire game. That's unacceptable. It was a sign of things to come for UGA last year as their offense continued to struggle week after week after week after week after week. I do not want to see that this week on the road at Arkansas. They should win this game by at least 28. They should score just as many points in the second half as they score in the first half. There's no point handing the ball off 30 times in the second half, no matter how much we're in the lead by. It doesn't make any sense. Our players need game experience. We've got a, a roster full of QBs who have never taken a snap at UGA. Freshman wide receivers, an offensive line that's never played together. The offense needs game time. I expect a huge win for UGA. Florida on the road at Ole Miss. Could be a good game. I expect Florida to win. They're clearly a better team. New coach staff at Ole Miss. I'll be doing preview and prediction videos of all these games later in the week. Don't worry. Uh, could be an interesting game, Florida at Ole Miss. Notre Dame plays at Wake Forest. Texas plays at Texas Tech. The Barn hosts Kentucky. LSU hosts Mississippi State. And, of course, Army and Cincinnati play each other. That's your rundown of your top 10 games. Clemson is off. The other nine top 10 teams all play this week. So there will be significant changes, I'm sure, in the Uncle Lou top 10 next week, even though not a whole lot this week. That's it. Uh, stay tuned later this afternoon for a special video for you. SEC kicks off on Saturday and I got something for you. I love you guys. We'll do it again. Have a good morning.